Welcome to the American Dream, a show that started right here in San Diego, America's finest city, that now spans positive media all across the country, real stories in real neighborhoods. Hi, I'm your host, Craig Sewing, and here's the American Dream. Welcome to the American Dream, a real show, not a reality show. The real estate, the lifestyle, the culture. It's not just about what you're living in, but the community you're going to live in. High-rise, luxury living. People are the vehicle. People are the connection. People are the expansion. Helping folks just like you find your dream home. It just never disappoints. Real stories in real neighborhoods with real experts. The opportunity to achieve our biggest goals and aspirations. It's the American dream. local real estate friend Trish McIntosh. Thanks for joining me on The American Dream, an Emmy-nominated show with seven telly awards about real estate, lifestyle, community, and culture. And today we're going to talk about fencing, but not the type of fencing that you would normally install around your yard. So let's go check out some highly skilled fencers here at the Tidewater Fencing Club. So I'm excited to introduce Tim Vincent. He's the president of the Tidewater Fencing Club, and we have a special guest joining us as well. Tim, how did you get involved, and how did, I mean, how did it even come about here in the Tidewater Hampton Roads area? Well, I got involved just through, you know, being in college and looking for something to do, and, you know, having been interested in sword-based stuff for years. And yeah, it just happened that there was a fencing club and I was able to get started. But as for this area and this club, this club's been around since 1972. People who want to try fencing, they just have to come out and give it a try. It's physically demanding, it's mentally demanding, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of fun. And and it's, you know, people think, oh, sword fighting, oh, okay, it's the same, oh, it's dangerous. Well, no, it's not dangerous at all. We were working, you know, we have these flexible, you know, dull metal sticks that we mm -hmm. use, mm -hmm. you know, and all this layered equipment that we end up wearing, as you can see on me and the, steel cage to protect the head. So yeah, it's very, you know, very safety conscientious. This sport has very, very stringent rules about safety, including the equipment itself. It has to be, you know, a certain quality of, of materials, everything, stuff that gets tested. So yeah, it's very safety conscientious with everything, especially the mask. When we have people come in, yes, we won't get started, but we also have to make sure they're doing it correctly, doing it safely. And that's why they have to go through our beginner training program. So what can people expect here at the Tidewater Fencing Club? What is this and what are we going to expect to see tonight? Well, first off, learning how to fence learning how to actually do this and, and actually you know, learn what it's all about and the fact that there's you know options. Mm -hmm. There's three different weapons you know you can eventually choose from. So now I'm standing here with Meredith Power. She's the vice president of the Tidewater Fencing Club and she's one of the coaches here and all the coaches volunteer their time here for you. So Meredith, you do more than just volunteering your time as a coach. You're, you do a lot. So tell me about that. Cool. Um, so my primarily I'm a coach, but I, I wear many, many hats. I, I fence, I'm a competitive fencer. I've been fencing for oh, 19 years now, and it's it's the, my most favorite thing in the universe to be doing. I just got back from the national championships a couple weeks ago. For, there's three different weapon disciplines, and I'm actually one of 10, there's fewer than 10 of us uh, women fencers in the United States that is rated as, with a competitive rating in all three weapon disciplines. So speaking of the swords, you know, tell me about some of these swords. Oh yeah, so we've got three different weapons in Olympic style fencing. The foil, and so you'll notice all of these are not sharp. None of these weapons are sharp. They've got little buttons at the tip that are blunted so that we have a chance to like not stab our opponents for real. So we've got our bendy blade here. We have a blade, we got the button here at the end. We've got a small guard for the hand called a bell guard to keep you from getting stabbed in the knuckles. And we've got a grip. There's a couple of different style grips. Everybody has one that they prefer, and it's just whatever fits your hand the best. Okay. And this is an electric weapon, so it's got a socket here to plug in a cord that runs down the fencer's arm to our electric scoring machine. Yep. And so for the foil, the target area to score a valid point is anything on the torso, not including the arms, not the head, and not the legs. Uh, the next one is the epee. This is a traditional weapon. And an epee, whole body is target. You both hit at the same time, you both get a point. 
Hooray, Weber Goose hits first win. So it's more like a traditional duel to first blood. Um, the saber weapon stems from cavalry saber. So this one, you'll notice it doesn't have a button here at the end. And all it needs to do is make contact with the other fencer. So I'm standing here with the James Newsom, who is one of the founding fathers of the Tidewater Fencing Club. And not only that, he is, has many wins under his helmet. He has won so many tournaments and James. So tell us about what we're doing here. We're actually out here getting ready to have a match. Right, we're on uh, the fencing field of play, which is called a piece or a strip. Um, it's divided, it's 14 meters long. It's divided in uh, different sections. There's okay. several lines pointed on the, painted on the ground, which are um, the on guard line. That's where you start uh -huh. the bout. Each fencer starts at the, behind the on guard line. Okay. The red line you see down here is the two meter warning. And then the final blue line at the end of the strip is the end of the territory. If you go off the end of the strip with both feet, you lose a point. And uh, the metal strip is grounded so that if, uh, if we push our weapon down, it doesn't do anything. But if we push our weapon down off the strip, it sets off the, uh, the scoring machine. That was intense. Thanks so much to Tim, Meredith, James, the Tidewater Fencing Club, and everyone that commits so much time here. If you really want to challenge your mental capabilities and your physical capabilities, you should definitely try fencing. Until then, I'm your host, Trish McIntosh, to the American Dream. I hope you enjoyed today's show, produced from America's finest city, but shot in the heart of your neighborhoods. Don't forget positive media when the world really needs it. Follow us on social media at The American Dream TV. See you next time. In the meantime, cheers to your American dream.